Good morning. Okay, guys, I'm going to make a quick video as I head south. I'm still making my way. I'm just taking my sweet time because the weather is just so perfect. And I was able to visit um, my sister and I went out to lunch with my friend. Um, and I was able to attend church for the first time. I think it's been a year. Yeah. So that was interesting. That was really good. I'll tell you guys about that. Um, and I don't just go to any church. I go to crazy spirit filled churches. So yeah, that was really good. And I got the answer that I needed. I went in there asking God for a specific answer to a question and I got it. And so I'll share that with you. Um, but yeah, I saw my sister and that was fun. Um, it was really interesting. You know how I mentioned in the last video, how our dogs are just brilliant. Well, okay. My sister showed up. I hadn't seen her yet. Um, she pulls up behind me. Roxy and I are sitting in the rig and my sister hadn't said anything. Um, it's not like her voice, you know, like alerted Roxy, but she opened her car door, got out and Roxy went crazy. Roxy was just like so excited and stuff. And so she smelt my sister. She was just like, she's here you know she was so excited i don't know <laughs> i don't know if roxy's ever been that excited to see anybody um yeah it was like you just couldn't contain all the excitement in her and she loves my sister my sister is totally a dog person and so um yeah it was so funny <laughs> it's like i didn't even put a leash on her i just put her outside and roxy took off straight to my sister and so yeah that was cute um she was so excited anyways um yeah and then i was able to get some parts ordered through amazon and have them delivered to my sister because i haven't been able to you know have anything delivered to me the route that i've been on there there are no amazon lockers so that was not even an option and so i had to wait you know i had to wait till I got to my sister's to pick up anything that I had ordered. So one of the things that I ordered was this part for my main house door. Um, there's a part underneath the door that keeps the door open. I don't know what it's called. It's just, it's escaping my memory right now, but, um, basically, um, it's gas pressured and it keeps that door open. And so I, I it was, it had gone bad. So the door would just, you know, <laughs> fly open and close if there was any wind or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I just watched a, a video online to see, you know, how to fix it. It's super simple. Um, it just took one tool and just, it was easy. I was shocked of how easy and it took me like five minutes and now my door stays open. And it was really weird because it's like a, a rod and then um, it's pressurized by, pressurized by gas. And with my hands, I could not get it to close. But as soon as I popped it into place, it opens and closes. So I don't know. I still can't figure out how that is. But um, anyway, so now my door stays open. And I have a whole new appreciation for it. <laughs> you know, these little things that, you know, you just take for granted until they break. So yeah, we're just uh, heading south. Um, oh, the church thing. So yeah, I spent, I had lunch with my friend. Um, that was another thing. It was like, we went to this really nice coffee shop and had breakfast. She bought me breakfast and uh, <clears throat> I had a drink I hadn't had in a long time, a matcha green tea latte. Oh, those used to be my favorite. And um, it was funny. They're just like, would you like it, um, you know, for here to go? And I'm like, for here, I want it fancy. I want it in a you know, a real mug, you know, <laughs> and just having Roxy, it was easy. Like I just, you know, put her down or had her on my lap. Um, and we just sat outside and talked and Roxy, you know, behaved herself. It was, everybody loves Roxy. So she got lots of attention. Um, and it was so good to see my friend, you know, I haven't seen her in a while. And, um, so I went to church with her and I haven't been to church. I want to say, over a year so um you know with the dogs i can't leave them and i couldn't take them 
but this one it was it was during the evening so this one night i was just like you know what i'm gonna give her <laughs> i'm gonna give her a couple benadryl and uh you know just relax her i didn't have any they have cbd uh chewables for dogs and so you can give them those to um you know for anxiety but you could also give them a benadryl so i gave her a benadryl early in the day with her it takes two she's i don't know if it's just her resistance or her weight but um i gave her another one at dinner and she was fine she was totally relaxed um and just i just kept on checking on her she was just you know she was good <laughs> is that terrible i drugged my dog so i can go to church <laughs> that's horrible um but it was like you know my one chance you know and i i've given her benadryl before and she's fine um so anyways I had asked God for one answer to one question and I knew at this church that I would get it. The pastor there is very spirit filled. He hears from God and I just knew God would just honor that. And so, um, I asked God if I should continue traveling for another year. That was my only question. Um, I felt like I should, um, but I wanted to be in the will of God and I just wanted confirmation that that's what I should do and just the peace of mind you know um because sometimes you can start doubt yourself and go you know this is what i want and so um the pastor came over to me and he put his hand on me and he said these were his words he says the lord says the dust will not settle the dust will not settle the dust will not settle until his work is done and i knew what that meant i knew just keep on trekking <laughs> so i was excited i was like oh i got my answer i was so happy um yeah i love going to that church they actually have another church um down south in san diego so they have two and they go back and forth um so i'm excited to now that i know roxy is you know good for a night i'm probably not going to give her benadryl you know i'll probably take her in with me or just let her sleep um and they have a huge parking lot there so if she cries you know she'll be fine i have to remember she's a dog i never let her cry or you know whine um if i don't have to and so she's a little spoiled <laughs> but there's times that i've you know just run into the store i had to and um and you know i've heard her you know howling and crying and come back <laughs> don't leave me uh you're a dog you're fine <laughs> she thinks she's a little human she thinks she's a little girl but that's my fault that's how i trained her you know she's my baby and she's been getting spoiled rotten rotten she's been getting so much attention from me even picking her up all the time just cuddling with her and i was thinking about this you know i heard another van lifer saying um you know are you really dr solo traveling you know um when you have a dog and i thought about that i thought you know what he's absolutely right you know like i don't ever feel alone and i know part of that is my personality i've never been a person that felt you know alone or loneliness because i am so introverted um but i think having a dog is like having um a companion in a sense because you talk to your dog you hug your dog you take care of your dog you know you um you're always like um interacting with a dog um so it is it it takes the loneliness out of being alone if that makes sense um so it would it's going to be interesting like once I no longer have her. It'll be interesting to see if I do feel the loneliness out on the road. Um, I've got my sons, which I can always, you know, contact, see, reach out to. So I know that I'm never alone alone. Um, I also have friends and family that I can reach out to. Um, and it doesn't take a lot for me to get that filled, you know, like I'm, there are people that can be around other people and they feel drained or they feel rejuvenized, you know, like we have, you know, different needs. And as 
I'm kind of an introvert extrovert. And so when I'm around a lot of people or a lot of activity, I get drained. So it doesn't take, but at the same time, when I'm alone too long, I can also feel a little drained, but it doesn't take a lot to get that filled up. So it could be a matter of like having lunch with a friend and then I'm good for a long time, you know, where some people are the opposite, you know, where, um, they get more, um, they get filled or rejuvenated, um, by being around people and then, and then being alone really depletes them. So I have a friend like that, you know, and like we balance each other out, but, um, yeah. So anyways, I don't think, um, it's the same, you know, when you travel alone, alone, especially when you need to be around people, then when you travel alone with a pet, whether that's a cat, a dog, whatever. Um, so it'll be interesting, but I thought about it this morning and I just thought, you know what, if I'm still doing this, let's say, God forbid, I lose Roxy soon. And I've already dedicated another year to, you know, traveling on the road. I think I'm going to feel that loneliness initially more so because now there's definitely no, you know, companionship. Um, but I'm going to sit with that. I'm going to sit with that for a while before I rush and get another dog. Um, I'm going to, because it's, it's a good lesson to really go deeper with yourself to say, okay, why am I feeling like this? What do I need? What, what, you know, like don't run away from those feelings, you know, and then, um, and then do things that you normally can't do when you have a dog, like, you know, go visit all the national parks that don't allow pets and really get all those things, you know, out of your system. And then I'm thinking maybe I'll get another dog down the road. Um, who knows? But definitely one with longer legs <laughs> a dog that can jump in and out because as i get older i know it's going to be harder for me to pick up a dog constantly to bring them in and out um and then i also want to stay active so i know dogs um i don't want to get a work dog you know that would be too much um but i want to get a dog that pushes me to go you know for walks every day and um, so yeah, things like that. But then I have to think about, you know, I don't plan to do this forever. So I have to think about my lifestyle after, you know, because I have a job that, um, it, I have a lot of freedom, but when I'm busy, I'm busy. So I don't think it's fair to get a dog that you won't be there for. Um, and that's initially why when I got rusty, I was working, 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 and he was alone, and I thought, he needs a companion. You know, he can't be alone in the house. I couldn't take him with me all the time. I did take him for a while, especially when he was a puppy. Um, but, and then I realized, I got, I have to leave him home, and he's the type of dog that needs companionship, so that's why we got Roxy, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, I have to think about that, too. Um, what is my lifestyle going to be like when I'm not traveling? Um, I could, I've thought about this too. I could foster a dog. I could pick up a dog and just foster it for, um, a period of time and I can keep doing that. And then that way there's no, um, real commitment, I guess you can say. So that when I stop traveling, um, you know, it's temporary. So then... You know, I could foster another dog if I want for a period of time. So that's an option too. So there's options out there. Um, and then I've got friends, family that have dogs that I could also take, um, you know, cause they need a break too. It's, you know, it's nice, to, you know, to offer that, you know, versus they would have to put their dog in a kennel or, um, you know, if they want to take a vacation. So anyways, there's options. But, um, yeah, I'm going to get back on the road, but I just wanted to check in with you guys and just kind of update you and, um, yeah, so the dust will not settle. <laughs> All right, guys, be blessed. Bye-bye.